On every FLL match in the last 15 years, they have used lines, and these lines are to help guide a team's robot to where it needs to go. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to do a line follower, and many tips and tricks to go along with it. Before we try making a line follower, we need to talk about what we need in the robot to do a line follower. We will use two driving wheels and a color sensor. However, the placement of the color sensor does matter. The color sensor has to be vaguely in front of the driving wheels in the direction that the robot is going. You also want to make sure, if you're using the color sensor, that it's not too close to the ground, because if it's too close to the ground, the reflected light will actually make everything look white, and if it's too high, then any ambient light, such as any light from the room you might be doing this in, could affect the color that the color sensor sees. Never put the color sensor behind the robot because the robot will go further and further away from the line. I've seen a lot of people actually suggest this in various forms and such. This is wrong. Do not do this. So let's get to the part you're probably here to see. How do we program a line follower? If you want to program a line follower, you actually have a few choices. You can program driving on one side of the line, driving on the other side of the line, or you can go from side to side. It does actually matter what side or whether you choose to go in the center, because it'll place the robot in a different spot relative to where the line is, and also, if the line turns in some ways, it this will change how your robot will react to a turn in the line. Alright, I think it's time to program. Let's start with a completely blank program. Let's start by having the robots find the line. We will begin by setting one of the drive motors, let's say motor F in this case, to a fairly slow speed. We don't want to drive too quickly because the robot may overshoot the line if we go too quickly. Then we'll have drive motor start moving. And then we're going to use a wait until block. And we're going to wait until color sensor finds black. And finally, we're going to stop the motor and test it. The robot went away from the color sensor, so we need to fix that by making the robot turn the motor in the other direction. Let's try it again. We now need to get off of the line, and all we have to do is copy and paste, and then we're going to flip the motors around. So we've been turning motor F, this time we're going to turn motor E. We will also need to flip the direction around, and we're going to need to look for white. Let's test this again. If we want to make this line follower go forever, we can just add a forever loop. As you can see, one side of the robot is having the robot go onto the line, and the other side of the robot is having the robot go off of the line, and this is going in quick succession repeatedly all the way around the track. But let's say, instead of following the inside of the line like we are doing in this case, let's go follow the outside of the line. All we need to do to follow the other side of the line is we need to switch the motors around. Right now, F turns until it sees black. We're going to change this so that E turns until it sees black. And as we're changing the motor, we also need to make sure we change the direction that the motor is turning in. And the same thing we're going to do for seeing white. Right now, E is turning until it sees white. We need to switch it so that F turns until it sees white. And flip the direction around, of course. Now that we've done that, let's test it. Notice how the robot is now following the outside of the line instead of the inside of the line. If we were to turn the robot around 
and have the robot follow the line, the robot would still work. It would just, in this case, the outside of the line going in one direction would be the inside of the line going in the other direction. If we want to try to stay in the center of the line and not follow one side, we need to have the robot drive until it sees black and then it sees white, and then switch motors, drive until it sees black, and then it sees white. So what we need to do now, we just need to add another wait. So we're not just going to wait until the robot sees black. We're going to wait until the robot sees black. And then we're going to wait until the robot sees white. And then switch motors. Once we have done that, let's test this again. Notice how the robot follows roughly in the middle of the line. It's not possible to actually follow completely in the middle of the line, but the robot is bouncing from both white sides of the line to kind of follow the middle of the line. This would work in both directions. Alright, maybe you want to reduce the swings that the robot has. One way we can reduce the swings the robot has is actually to set the speed of the motors to be really slow. Right now it is 25. Let's see what happens when we set this to 10%. The robot took more than a minute to get around this mat. In the other runs you've seen, the robot took roughly 30 seconds. However, a minute, that's way too slow. So, surely there's another way to reduce the swings that the robot has when doing the line follow without hugely compromising the speed of the robot. So instead of one motor go, the other motor go, over and over, we have both motors go, except one of the motors will move faster than the other motor. So, what we're going to need to do, we need to set our movement motors. In this case, they're EO and F. And we're going to set our speed to, let's start with 25%. We will make some adjustments later. And then instead of only one motor going, we're going to move both motors. So let's say we're going to start moving to the right, 30. And then we're actually going to have a stop moving both motors instead of just stopping one motor, because remember, both motors are going. And then we're going to go to the left, 30. And again, we're going to have the robot stop moving, and let's test the robot. Oops, we need to change the direction, so we're going to set the speed to minus 25 instead of 25%. It's easy to make mistakes like this, and just make adjustments as you need to. Notice how much more smooth the line follower is. However, there is a bit of a problem with this line follower. Sharp turns. Here I am testing one of the less smooth line followers, and notice how it easily stays on the line. A line follower that is more coarse is easier able to stay on a line, especially when a sharp turn happens. I'm going to do another line following test where we're going to set the robot to be 90 degrees to the line it's trying to follow. Here, the difference is very obvious. The smoother line follower fails to catch the line. The Rougher line follower easily catches the line. So it turns out, rougher line followers and smoother line followers have some advantages over each other. So, how do we get the best of both worlds? I will share a technique that I actually haven't seen anyone taught really before, which is I call the two-step line follower. We start with a rough line follower, and then we end with a smooth line follower. So I've already made the code. But we're going to do a new test where we drive the robot into the line, and then we're going to do the rough line follower for a bit, and then the smooth line follower. So we're going to start by putting the rough line follower at the start, and then the smooth line follower after that. Let's test the code. Notice how the robot is able to reach the line, and then start line following roughly around it. And then later on, it is able to smoothly transition to the more smooth line follower without worrying about falling off of the line before the robot is well positioned to it.
Catching a line and then line following is probably the most realistic way you're going to be using a line follower in FAL. But there's one last thing I haven't talked about, which is how do we decide how much line following we do? To determine the length of the line follower we want to do, we change the loop we're using. So, right now we're using a forever loop, which means that the line follower will never end. We can choose to repeat the line follower sequence, say, 20 times. And so what we'll do, we use a repeat loop instead of a forever loop. Take this out of the forever loop. And then set this number up here to the amount we want, which is 20. A more sophisticated way we could do this, though, is we can decide we want to do the line follower until, say, motor E turns for a thousand degrees. So what we can do, we can change this repeat, in this case 20 times loop, to a different kind of loop. So we'll take the code out, delete the loop, we're going to go repeat until, and we're going to put all this code back into the loop. Next we're going to scroll down to the operators, and we're going to go here and add this. This green block compares two numbers, and if one number is less than another number, then it'll output true. The loop will continue to repeat over and over until that green block says true. In the green block, we're going to say a thousand degrees and then less than the relative position that E, the motor rotation sensor, has. We should also reset the relative position that motor E has, otherwise this code may not work. These relative position blocks are not readily available in the code for whatever reason. You can find them if you click at the bottom on the bottom left corner and check the more motors. All right, let's test this. Here, the robot will follow the line until the rotation sensor in the motor E gets over a thousand degrees. You can adjust this number if you want the robot to go further or not as far. However, it doesn't check very often, so you can only be so precise with this number. The reason this is limited in precision is the robot has to do all this code we're moving around before it checks to see if the E rotation sensor is more than a thousand degrees. And if it's anything less than that, it's going to go through this whole series of steps again and then check afterwards. So the robot may overshoot this 1,000 degrees by quite a wide margin. All right, that's all for today. This is quite a lot longer of a video than I put out recently, but I hope you have learned something about line followers today. I know I didn't cover a number of things such as proportional line followers or doing line followers using the light sensor instead of the color sensor, but I hope that this gives you a good idea of how a line follower works and how you can try to use one in competition. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. If you liked or learned something from this video, please leave a like on the video and subscribe to this channel. And you can email me here at this email address if you want me to help your FLL team prepare for either the next season or for the upcoming competition. Thank you.